Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Today in history, June 24th, 2018. Now, on this day in history, Saudi's first women were allowed to drive. Um, before now, women were not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia, but the ban was lifted today in history, June 24th. Now, Saudi Arabia was the only country in the world where women could not go behind the wheels of the car and they had to hire private drivers or their um, relatives had to drive them. Now, some women activists had, you know, taken pictures of themselves behind the wheel, posted it online, basically saying that, you know, these laws need to change. Those women activists were arrested, you know, simply because they took pictures of themselves behind cars. Now, at least eight women activists were being detained. They could face trial for counter-terrorism and long prison sentences for their activism. Now, if you were caught driving in Saudi Arabia before 2018, you could be fined or arrested. So when on this day in history, King Salman actually announced that the ban on women driving had been lifted, women celebrated, you know, went behind car, um, the wheels of cars, taking picture, you know, and just basically celebrating the fact that they now had some sort of freedom um, regarding driving. So this, this was widely celebrated. The United Nations congratulated Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, even other groups like Amnesty said this is just one step. There were other things that women are not allowed to do, you know, like interact with men and, you know, many other very restrictive laws in the country. But on this day in history, uh, June 24th, 2018, women were allowed to drive by themselves unaccompanied by a man in Saudi Arabia. Fantastic. Uh, two things I would uh, quickly chip in. Um, one of them is, uh, I think I remember, you know, that Mohammed bin Salman, uh, who had been, you know, over time, you know, and many other times been criticized for being also very, very draconian and, you know, um, having, uh, you know, a grip on Saudi Arabia that wasn't very, very juicy. Um, but at the same time, you know, he also was able to, has been able to bring in some level of modernization and relaxing some of those very, very strong age-old laws. You know, yes, that, and that many have attributed women. that to his son, you know, yeah. ambassador yeah, to the ambassador US and all the reforms. Yes. Um, so, um, so there is that, you know, and then the second point is um, Saudi Arabia is a country that Nigerians go for Mecca or go, to go for, what's it called now? Pilgrimage. Um, Hajj, uh, pilgrimage, um, is a country that a lot of Muslims also look up to as, you know, like the, the, you know, the idea of what, you know, Islam should, you know, be like and all of that. But in Nigeria, we don't seem to be adopting a lot of these, um, uh, you know, um, ways, you know, and relaxing some of these, of the grip that we have on women uh, with regards to Islam and, and being a Muslim. Um, we see that they allow women to drive. We see that they, they you know, be, be, being able to create a freer society for women, uh, Muslim women in their country. But here, we still have a society where people can still be sentenced to death for blasphemy because of a song or WhatsApp. We still have a society where people can still be, um, be cursed and attacked on social media because they wore a dress, you know, the person wore a dress that showed, you know, her back. Um, we still have a lot of all those things that we don't seem to want to let go of. You know, I'm not sure why exactly, if it is because you know, the uh, Muslims here are more religious than the ones in Saudi Arabia, or the ones here just love... It's the Sharia you know, law. Even, uh, not even everybody <coughs> was happy when this ban was lifted. Many um, leaders, you know, many religious leaders spoke out against the saying this was basically eroding the values of you know, Islam and you know, going against Sharia law. So really, that basically is what it is. It just drains me, to be honest. Anyway, um, that's it on Saudi Arabia. Let's move away from Saudi now to Russia, where on this day in history, uh, the 24th of June in 2020, Russia celebrated the uh, 75th anniversary and its biggest celebration of the Nazi surrender. Uh, this was initially meant to be celebrated on the 9th of uh, May, but it was uh, uh, postponed um, because, of course, of the COVID-19 and uh, some other reasons. Um, it was eventually celebrated on the 24th of June in 2020. Um, it's a 75-year anniversary of its, um, of its victory over Nazi Germany. It was celebrated with a huge military parade through the Red Square in Moscow. Um, it, of course, um, is one of those uh, events in Russian history that has continued to be celebrated for many, many years. And uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin reluctantly postponed the annual celebration because, like I said earlier, of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it takes place... Um, on this day, in celebration of the the 
um, uh, end of the war of World War II after Nazi Germany surrendered. If you you know look back in history, the war actually started in the 1939, I believe, after Hitler invaded Poland, um, and of course uh, led to the loss of 40 to 60 million lives. Um, about 7 million Jews also were, um, were killed in concentration camps in Germany back then uh, because Hitler was trying to create his own form of uh, supremacy of the, of the German blood or the German race or whatever it is that his story was. But eventually he committed suicide and um, you know, the Nazis had to surrender after his death. Uh, there's many people who have uh, had conversations on what really led to the surrender. Some people say it's after the United States, of course, stepped into the war. The British, of course, had held on for a long time. And then the U.S. came in and um, uh, bombarded you know, some parts of Germany. And, of course, the uh, attack on Japan, the atomic bomb in Japan, also maybe some of all those Hiroshima things played, uh, exactly. yes, um, played uh, factors. There's also been some history documentaries that I've seen that have shown certain parts of the war that were won because of the weather. Uh, because there's um, parts of the army that weren't prepared for the cold, uh, yes. the cold at that time um, and eventually couldn't uh, fight. So um, on this day, um, Russia celebrates 75 years or 75th, its 75th anniversary last year um, of uh, its uh, Nazi surrender um, um, after the Second World War. Fantastic. That's what we have for you today in history. Let's take a break and uh, we'll return uh, to begin our first major conversation this morning.